We saw a lot of cool stuff at this morning's BlackBerry 10 announcement, but if BlackBerry wants to take on the big players, iOS and Android, it has a third place contender to deal with first in the form of Microsoft's Windows Phone. So let's see how it does that. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is BlackBerry 10 versus Windows Phone 8. Okay, so just like our BlackBerry versus Android comparison from just a couple hours ago, the BlackBerry versus Windows Phone comparison starts at the lock screen, and the differences also start there. But there are a lot more similarities in this example. They both slide effectively from the bottom. You really can't slide Windows Phone from the top too well. And there are lots of cool similarities here. We've got big time. We've got uh, in Windows Phone. We've got big date and somewhat big date on BlackBerry. We've also got a preview of your events and a preview of your notifications in the peak over here, and in the little notifications down here. The big difference here is that Windows Phone, just like any other operating system besides BlackBerry almost, makes you unlock by pressing a physical button. You, you can't press the home button. You can't do anything. You can't do anything fancy. You just have to press that button and then unlock the screen. With BlackBerry, if you watch our Android video or our first hands-on, you'll be familiar with this, you can just drag a finger up from the bezel and you have unlocked your device, which we think is pretty awesome. The next huge difference is gonna be in notifications. Now this is a big sore spot on Windows Phone because there is no real notification center as we at Pocket Now and many other people have commented on in uh, days, weeks, and months and years past. Uh, Microsoft is rumored to be working on one, but it's just not there. It's probably going to live uh, to the left of the home screen here. You'll notice I'm swiping and nothing is happening. It's just begging for a notification center there, but it is not there. So for right now, you have uh, live tiles here with notification counts on each specific live tile. You can arrange these tiles as you like, but it's not a unified notification center. It means always having to return to the home screen to check your notifications. The situation on BlackBerry really couldn't be any more different. In addition to the peak functionality, which lets you see your message counts from any app, even if you're on the home screen. And the home screen is one thing, but if you're inside, say, the settings application, you can just slide up and peek, see if any of those are worth it to you. No, I don't really want to check any of those, I'll go back to the app. But if something does pique your interest, you can ha peek, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you can continue the movement just by dragging over to the right here, and you have the BlackBerry Hub. Now this is currently set to Twitter, but I'm going to go ahead and hop into the Hub itself. And now this is a unified list of everything that I've built into the Hub, which includes email accounts, Twitter account, Facebook account, etc., etc. And this is accessible from any point in the OS. And then if you want, you can filter those by, say, you know, you can take them out of their, out of its unified state. But I like to keep it all together, and BlackBerry has been very good at the unified inbox for a while. Also, we would be negligent if we didn't point out BlackBerry's iconic flashing red notification indicator, which lets you know when you have messages waiting, when if you've missed system events, missed calls, or something like that. Windows Phone, uh, this particular Windows Phone, the Ative Odyssey, does not support a notification LED, but uh, more than that, even Windows Phones with LEDs do not typically use them for notifications. They're only for charging indicators. So all this taken together, we usually don't choose winners or losers in these early comparisons, but uh, we have to say BlackBerry really has notifications in the bag in this particular comparison. So what about local search? Well, on Windows Phone 8, there is no local search. You notice there is a dedicated search button which takes you to Bing, which is a really nice shortcut there, and you can search the internet for, say, something like Pocket Now for all your smartphone and tablet news needs, but it only searches the web. And if we look, we can, go, we can get local results, and that's nice, and we can get media and photos of our logo and stuff, and you can buy shopping I guess, I guess we have something to do with women's lacrosse. I don't know, but there are no local results at all. You cannot search the device. If you want to search the device for a contact, you have to go into the People Hub. If you want to search for something in Foursquare, you have to jump into Foursquare, jump into Facebook. You have to go in, you have to, there's a very siloed experience on Windows Phone. If you're searching for something, you have to make sure you're in the right place before you start your search. 
That is not at all the case on BlackBerry 10. If you'll notice, if you unlock the device, you have a search option here, front and center, very similar to the Bing shortcut there, and that persists whether you're in the app drawer or on the home screen. It does go away if you hop into an app, but that is always accessible via the hub functionality. And, well, actually we started a search there, but there it is down, down below. You can do a search, and we'll go ahead and do Pocket Now once again. Let's see what kind of results we get. Now, oh, if we spell it right, we get much better results. Pocket Now. Boom, and there we have all of our mail, all of our contacts with Pocket Now in the name, any mention of Pocket Now on the device. There's just a bevy of results there, which is very, very handy. And then, of course, you can filter your search as you see fit. We're having all kinds of complicated conversations about device features here. Let's just do something simple and launch an app. So on Windows Phone, you'll notice the home screen ribbon here. You, these live tiles are not just indicators for notifications, but they're also shortcuts to apps. So let's just hop into Foursquare, because that's what we did last time. There's our splash screen, and the app goes ahead and starts. Now, we, since we have no system search, we can't search for an app and, and just jump right into it, but uh, that's a very simple way of doing it. Come back to the home screen, and there and that is. To do the same thing on BlackBerry 10, of course, we have a couple different choices. We can just hop into the app drawer and tap on the app and launch it, and that's just fine. But you'll notice it is also right there because it's one of our recently used apps on the home screen here. So if it's an app you use all the time, like, say, Foursquare, you're jumping around and checking in places, and it's always there because you want people to know where you are, you just go ahead and tap it right from there, and you can launch it from there. Or... If uh, for some reason it's not there, you can't find it, you don't want to, you, you really like typing things, you just go ahead and type Foursquare, and there it is. It finds it in the application, it finds a contact about Foursquare, it finds messages relating to Foursquare, and you can expand that search if you want to, but really I just want to open the app, boom, just like that. Now we covered a little bit about multitasking on the Windows Phone side of things. This is your ribbon of recently run apps, and if you want to cancel them, you can go ahead and press the X and that'll disappear and rearrange that. And we jumped back into there, and we can go ahead and cancel the phone app, and then if you want to hop into one, you just tap on it, and that's nice. Windows Phone offers a similar arrangement, uh, requires you to press and hold on the back button, and then you get this card-like uh, ribbon of recently used apps. However, it doesn't give you the functionality to close them, and if you want to close apps instead of just uh, tombstoning them in memory, you actually have to kind of spam the back key until you... Uh, uh, you can do this one at a time, or you can just spam it until you can't go any further. You're back at the home key, and that means nothing, uh, the home screen, that means nothing is running in the background. Uh, with BlackBerry, you can just manage it right here because the task switcher is a core component of the OS, which is pretty cool, and it's something we really haven't seen uh, since the WebOS days. So these are philosophically different platforms. Uh, Windows Phone 8 emphasizes simplicity and minimalistic design, whereas BlackBerry 10 places a much higher priority on functionality at the expense of intuitiveness. So there is a higher learning curve on the BlackBerry device. Which one will ultimately come out on top is anyone's guess, and we're going to be doing a whole lot more in the way of comparisons and editorial content on these two platforms and all the others going forward. But in the meantime, on this first day of actual public exposure to BlackBerry 10, it is very nice to see two contenders for the number three spot in smartphones that are so very different in very good ways. Lots more to come on BlackBerry 10, folks, so visit us in the links of the description below. I'm Michael with Pocket Now. Thanks for watching.